Hi, my name is Aaron Rothmeyer. I'm a market product manager at SICK, and I'm here to show you a brand new product, the PicoScan 100. Now this sensor is our latest in our 2D portfolio. It is our TIM class LiDAR, which means basically it is four things primarily. It is compact and efficient. It is powerful, it is accurate, and it is also quite easy to use. So I'm excited to show you a little bit more about what I mean by that. Um, starting out with compact, you can tell with, by the sensor in front of me, it is small. It is actually four millimeters shorter than our previous TIM. That means that if you're trying to fit it into a small space, say on a mobile robot or something like that, it is uh, much easier to integrate. Um, it is also uh, very efficient, so 4.5 watts is its normal power consumption. So again, if you're trying to use it on a mobile piece of equipment with a battery, you're not going to be consuming a lot of power running this LiDAR. Uh, and then it's light as well, so it's 220 grams. Um, but the reason I get really excited about that uh, housing is because it also has very nice mounting on the bottom. So you can see there's three screw holes here, nice uh, rugged screws that can be used to mount this to uh, any material. Uh, so it's a very well-designed sensor from a mechanical standpoint, but it's also very powerful. Um, so uh, if we look at the uh, ranges and the resolutions of the LiDAR sensor, I think you'll agree uh, there's a lot of good things going for it. It can handle uh, about 75 meters maximum on a white target, 120 meters on a reflector. Those are huge numbers that previously would really only be achievable with a sensor like this, a big 220 gram sensor, or, sorry, not 220, 2,200 gram sensor, uh, very large obviously and fairly expensive. All of that capability is now fit, fitting into the Pico scan. Uh, it can also handle 40 meters on black targets. Um, it does all of that at 40 or even 50 hertz for some configurations. Um, and it's also very high resolution, so I'll actually show you in the software uh, just how high of a resolution we can achieve. In the software right now, I've got a dark foam corrugated target over here um, that you can see on the left side of the screen. Uh, if I zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see what that is, but it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, if I switch to uh, 0.1 degree uh, angular resolution, you can really see just how many points we've got on that target. And it's extremely stable. There's not a whole lot of jiggle or uh, movement in the dots. Um, that's just because this, uh, this sensor is so uh, precise and uh, accurate. So how accurate is it? Well, it's got a uh, statistical error of five millimeters or less, uh, which is very nice uh, for a lot of uh, applications. And uh, the, a lot of that is enabled by the uh, laser itself, which is a very fine point laser. Uh, 0.27 degree uh, divergence on that, and it's a nice circular spot, not rectangular or anything like that. So it's very capable of picking up fine details. Again, just for reference, uh, previously, many of, that, uh, many of those types of specifications would only be seen on this very high-end LiDAR that, uh, that I've got here. Um, We've also incorporated other features in order to make it easier to work with the sensor outdoors and keep it accurate, uh, such as multi-echo, uh, fog filter, particle filter, all of these things are included in the Pico scan. And I can actually, again, demonstrate what multi-echo looks like here in this application. If we are working outdoors, uh, rain, dust, snow, stuff like that can often uh, create multiple echoes or multiple reflections just as they fall through the field of view. So I've got a window screen over here on my left, uh, which you can see here um, showing up on the screen. You can see this, the window screen is lit up in blue and the dots behind it are lit up in green. That's because Echo 1 is showing up as blue, Echo 2 is showing up as green. If I wanted to get rid of that, if I was outdoors and I wanted to say, no, I don't want to see rain, I don't want to see snow, stuff like that, I can turn on what's called the Echo Filter, switch over to Last Echo, and the screen completely disappears. All you see are these uprights from the, uh, the, the frame around the screen. So we're just seeing right through that, just like we would if it were rain or snow or fog. So pretty cool stuff there. Um, one other uh, feature that we put in place in order to make this accurate and easy to use 
is we're also identifying reflectors internal to the sensor. So we're just basically, uh, we, can, we have the capability of ignoring uh, all the ranging data and just dealing with what are reflectors. I can show that here by switching over to reflector mode. You can see all the dots, all the re returns turn gray, uh, except for the reflectors, which are lit up here in red, one on my left and one on my right. And so those reflectors then can be used for localization to figure out where you are within a reflector or within a facility if you're using reflector-based uh, localization uh, without having to deal with a whole bunch of extra ranging data. So one of the final things that we did to make the sensor easy to use is uh, we've set it up with what's called a system plug. So if you look at the bottom of the sensor, there's two screws here uh, that connect this black portion to the rest of the body. Uh, what that does is it allows us to pull that off uh, and replace the housing if anything should happen to the lens or anything like that. Uh, all the configuration is stored in the system plug and then that can just be removed, uh, new housing put on, and you're back in business plug and play. Um, that, those two screws can also be removed if you want to rotate the system plug 180 degrees so that your cables exit at a different angle. Uh, and then additionally, you know, if you uh, wanted a different field bus option or a different connector option or something like that, that can be integrated into the system plug as well without having to redesign the entire Pico scan. Uh, so a lot of capability there right there in the system plug. Um, we've made all of this uh, capability as easy to order as possible. Um, we set up uh, a configurator on our website so you can set up a custom uh, part number. Uh, we also have three predefined part numbers called Core, Prime, and Pro for different levels of capability. And then finally, uh, we are using the compact and message pack output format to make it much easier to parse and read the data coming out of the Pico scan. So I really appreciate your time joining me today. Uh, please do go to our website if you need more information on the Pico scan, uh, or do check us out on social media for more details about all of our products. Thank you very much.